Well, there's, that's the, one of the big questions. Now, the standard way that the field looks at this is to say, well, um, you know, for, in the case of vision, for example, you don't need eyes to have visual experiences, right? In fact, if you, you can close your eyes and if we stimulate your brain, you, you can have visual phosphine, so you can have conscious visual experiences. So, in some sense, your consciousness of vision is not just a process of the eyes. It, and they would then say that that's evidence that it's the brain that's causing your conscious experiences. And so, what we do have, and what the field is really good at right now, are literally dozens, perhaps even hundreds now, of well-defined neural correlates of consciousness. So that we, where we know that this particular area of the brain has activity that's highly correlated with this particular kind of, of conscious experience. So, for example, area V4 of cortex, a visual cortex, um, is highly correlated with color perception. So if you inhibit that area in the left, say the left hemisphere, with transcranial magnetic stimulation, then you will lose all experience of color in the right visual field. You will still experience color in the left visual field. So here's a case where we can just put a magnet, just touch it to your skull, and your conscious experiences changes dramatically, and we know where to touch it and what experience you will have. So there's clear correlation between the conscious visual experience that you're having and the changes in it, and the cortical activity that you're, in this case, inhibiting. And if you do it on the right hemisphere, side, then you lose visual, you know, color in the left visual world. And the same is true for motion. So there's an area in lateral temporal area that does motion. So if you in inhibit that with magnetic fields, you'll lose the ability to see motion in the right visual field. Everything is like a stroboscope. You see a person there, there, but you don't see the motion in between. Fortunately, when you take the magnet away, the motion comes back and the color comes back. So we have all these correlates but the question then, the deeper question is, does the correlation imply causation? Is it the case that all these very strong correlations, and they're there, um, imply that the brain is causing the conscious experiences? Now, most people in the field think, yes, it's a slam dunk. It's, the, the evidence is quite clear. But the problem we have is that no one has been able to give not only a scientific theory, but even any remotely plausible idea about how that could be. How could sodium, potassium, calcium ions running back and forth through holes in neural membranes be my conscious experience of the color green, uh, or the smell of a rose, or the sound of a trumpet? We, the, there, are, there are a lot of so-called theories out there, and there's, you know, they'll have all these interesting neural mechanisms like reentrant thalamocortical loops, um, collapse of, of states of microtubules, and so forth. But then when you say, where does the consciousness comes in and they try to say here comes consciousness there's always a gap right there there's a miracle that occurs between the reentrant thalamocortical loops and the appearance of consciousness and no one has been able to fill that gap in um, with the scientific theory not even with a plausible idea so the idea that the brain causes our conscious experiences is widespread most people in cognitive neuroscience would say of course um, but the embarrassing fact is we don't have a single scientific theory and no plausible ideas. So I'm actually um, exploring a different direction. You could think of it as a search strategy. We're, we're trying to find the solution to this problem. How, how is consciousness related to brain activity? 99% of the researchers are searching in one part of the search space, namely how, does, how could the brain cause consciousness? And we're not getting anywhere. So at least a couple percent of us should go to the other part of the search space and try the other direction. Let's try consciousness first and see if it leads to brain activity you know, as, as a product. So go the other direction and solve the mind-body problem that way. It sounds implausible to my colleagues in cognitive neuroscience, but hey, as a search strategy, it's implausible for us all to look in one part of the search space. So let me go over here and look at this other part and we'll see you know, who comes up with an answer. <laughs>